Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk about Major League Fishing, Oki Division, BFL, the second event of the season on the Arkansas River, April 1st, 2023. So um, what went down, how it happened, uh, how practice went, I'm going to kind of cover it all with you. There ain't a whole lot to cover there, especially tournament-wise. It did not go well for me, did some things wrong. I tried to do things opposite of what I did last time I was there think I was doing the right thing I just needed to build on that but I tried something different than the last time I was there which last time I was there was oh when was it nine years ago if I do believe eight years ago so it's been a while since I've been there and it was in April as well uh, before I get into the video if you guys are new to the channel um, so become uh, become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber yet and like the video if you guys are like the content I'm putting out so let's dig into the Arkansas River. So where do they fish there? Usually any tournaments I fish there, I fish two BFLs out of there, and they go out of Muskogee and they go out of Three Port or uh, yeah, Three Forks Harbor, I believe it's called, and it's just right there south of the bridge in Muskogee. I can't remember what highway that is right there, just south of the bridge. Um, and I'll get a picture there for you guys to put it in there. If I remember to get that in there, I don't know if that's in my pictures there or not. I go through them all before the video starts. So we took out of there. So I looked at some areas, and I started fishing up in the Neo Show. But the problem up there in practice was there was a, too much current up in there to fish up in the Neo Show. So I didn't really catch anything. I'm guessing it was because of the current the weekend before. It was running really hard. I couldn't tell you exactly how hard. In Auto Fort Gibson, they had, I believe, every gate open. So it was really flowing up in there. So I pulled out of there in practice, and I ran to Spaniard Creek. And in Spaniard Creek, I didn't have much luck in there. And I wasn't seeing much bait was my biggest problem. I couldn't find the bait. So on the second day of practice, I put in at Greenleaf Creek, but the problem I had seen with Greenleaf Creek is it's so obvious. So the first picture here shows Greenleaf Creek, and this is the only place I could get any bites. And this was on the Sunday before the tournament. I went in there and I started catching them on a jerk bait. Now I'll show you where I started catching these in the second picture on the jerk bait. And I was throwing a Mega Bass Vision 110. Um, junior, I forgot to bring it in here with me. I don't have it here, but it's a Vision 110 Junior in Sexy Shad. You can look it up. It's real easy to look it up and see that color that I was throwing in there. And I was throwing that because the water in there in practice, which you'll see in the second picture here, will get you into Greenleaf Creek. And that's going to show you all the areas I caught them at in there. And I was catching them. Because the water was a little cleaner, and I was catching them on the jerk bait. The water temp, I believe, got up to 57 or 58 that Sunday, and they were just stacked in there. I caught one. You'll see here in the picture, the red, I caught one short, and then I caught one around four and a half pounds. But that wasn't the first area I fished when I pulled in there. The first area I fished when I pulled in there was the green area, and I caught one around two and a half to three pounds, which you'll see the picture of it here. I tried to get the video. I don't know what happened when I got it off the GoPro. I took it off the GoPro, and it didn't get converted over the computer for some reason. I went to sit down to go through that footage, and it didn't get all the footage from that day on there. So I caught the two and a half, three pounder there on that point. And that was after I actually switched over. I was throwing a Vision 110 full size, and they wasn't eating it, so I switched down to the Junior. And that's when that fish hit it, the first cast. So I left there, went across to the points over there um, where the red is, and then I caught uh, one short and one around four and a half pounds there where the red is down through there. And there was another area just, just right to the east of there that I caught another short on as well. And then I pulled out of there because I said, okay, I know these fish are in here. There ain't no reason to stay here. I know they're in here. This is a great place to come to the tournament if I don't find anything else. So the yellow, these are the other areas that I caught them in practice, but I didn't catch any keepers. They were just littler fish. They were 12 and 13 inches, quite a few 13 and a half inches and a couple 13 and three quarters in that area. So I knew this was a backup plan in the tournament if it was too full back in there in Green Lake. That was my backup plan was to go to these areas. And then the purple, that is where I also caught a keeper in practice and I caught a short in practice right there. And that, so that's the only place actually in the tournament where my co-angler caught a keeper. He only caught two fish. He caught one back under the bridge there towards the east 
And then he caught the one right here um, in the purple right there. That is where he caught his fish there. Now, when I pulled up there in the tournament, I got in there and my first area, which would have been where I caught my four and a half pounder, the red area, it had about four boats in there. I think there was four or five boats right on that area. And then the other area where I caught them, right there on that point, there wasn't nobody on the point directly, but there was a guy back on this side and there was a guy out in the middle or a guy back to the west and then a guy out towards the middle that looked like he'd just pulled off the point and was pulling off of that. So I worked my way in there to fish on that point and didn't get anything there. I had a couple of them on the front facing sonar miss it and I really wanted to fish the area where I caught that big four and a half to five pounder at so I went over and I finally got in there I think it took about three hours to actually get over there once it finally opened up to get over there because there were so many boats hitting and I couldn't just jump in front of nobody to get in there so I had to wait my turn to go over there and fish with those guys to for it to open up so once it opened up I got over there I did finally once I got over there um all together all day between I think I caught four off of that area if I remember right and then after I went to that area and seeing they wasn't biting I left and went over actually to the yellow and it would be the yellow area um, if you could see the boat ramp I didn't put a boat ramp where it is in the picture there but it's just right when you go under the bridge going back to the west that yellow area right there I caught two keepers there or two shorts there and my partner caught a short as well there and then I caught another short off on one of the far east yellow areas as well on a wacky rig later in the day. I think I caught two later in the day on the wacky rig as well. I think I had eight altogether that I caught. Just didn't get any keepers in the boat. Now, what was I doing and why was the fish in here? They was in here because I was fishing grass edges. All the stuff I was fishing in practice, there was a little more water there. And I was fishing these grass edges at, and I was fishing the break or the drop, and I was fishing that with the jerk bait, just off of those grass edges. I was throwing that Mega Bass Vision 110 Junior. I was throwing a plus one in practice, but then they moved up a little shallower, and the water actually, they pulled, I think, two or three foot. It was two or three foot shallower than it was in practice. So I switched over just to a 110 Junior, not the plus one, but just the 110 Junior, because it didn't go as deep, and that's when I started getting more bites on it. Like I said, it was in that sexy shad color. Now, what went wrong in the tournament was there was just too much pressure in there. I mean, I pulled in there under the bridge, and there was about 15 to 20 boats in there, and then on the east side of the bridge, or the west side of the bridge, I mean, there was... Oh, probably 20 or 30 boats in there. So I knew it was going to be crowded, but I didn't expect it to be as crowded as it was. And I mean, we could see everything going on around us in that area, and there just wasn't nobody really catching them very well at all. I think we've seen two keepers caught all day is all we've seen around us. Anybody keeping any fish? I think we only seen two or three fish even caught all day in there. So um, we did pretty good from what I feel anyway for the area I was in I didn't have really anything else to fall back on now on my way back to the boat ramp there was an area I stopped in it was there at Cootie Creek is the name of it I don't have a picture of it here because it didn't really do any good in there so I don't know if it's any good for you guys but I stopped in there on the way back and what I noticed about there the same way Greenleaf and practice was I think that was what really put everything off in Greenleaf was there was no shad the shad were just gone in practice. They were all over the place back in Greenleaf, and then also the pressure as well in Greenleaf. What really hurt my fish was my fish was underneath everybody else's boats, and everybody else was up actually flipping the grass. And the fish I was trying to catch were, were so pressured because they were right on the top of them. Everybody else was going right over the top of their heads, and these are the fish that I was fishing for. And you could tell they were pressured and just real finicky and didn't want to bite nothing. That's why they were so hard to get. Um, to bite they were very difficult I don't know how many fish I think I had 30 or 40 fish following it and uh, from the size of them from the front facing sonar that active target does a great job of even showing the size of the fish they were really good quality fish they were three to four pounders I even had a couple that looked to be like that four or five pounder that I had caught in practice so they was in there I just didn't happen and didn't get them to bite and I really didn't have anything else to fall back on so I stayed in there all day just hoping they would hope I could get some fired up and it just didn't happen so now back to the story I'm running back to Cootie Creek on the way back I had uh, I think 10 minutes to fish once I got back into Cootie Creek so and that's just right there just south of the ramp from takeoff if you look on the avionics and go to Three Forks Harbor just go south right where it makes its bing back to the east there's a 
or a creek that goes back to the west. That's Cootie Creek. Just look through there, and you can see that creek, and that's more of what I should have focused on this time of year, and I'm going to remember that. Or I should have ran to Kerr, one of the two, but Kerr's a long ways down there in my boat. My boat was about, I think it's topping out at uh, 46 the other day, 48, somewhere around there. So it takes a long time to get on a Kerr. I think it's uh, actually to where I wanted to fish at down there, to the marina, because I'd have to run to the marina to get gas for, in my boat. Um, it's only got a 25-gallon gas tank. So you're looking at about uh, 75 miles, and in my boat, that's about an hour and a half to a two-hour run in my boat, plus you got the lock. So you're looking about two and a half hours to get down there and then two and a half hours back. So you're looking at about five hours. So you're looking at three hours of fishing time once you're down there. So I should have done that, but I just um, really had a fear of not making it back through the lock and the boat to get a bad boat number and not really getting down there and getting in through the lock. I died. That, that's my suggestion if you go to um, down there to this area and the Arkansas River is to go into Kerr, not stay in Weber Falls, but I have seen, did see some good limits caught out of Weber Falls though. But what I would have done different if I stayed in Weber Falls is I'd have focused more on these creeks because on my way back, I stopped into Cootie Creek and there were just shad all over the place. So where the shad are, when you find the bait, you'll find the bass. Um, in practice, I only found the bait in one spot and they wasn't there in the tournament. So that's what really set, I mean, the fish were still there. But when the bait are there, they're eating more, and there's more plentiful of the bass. So when you look in there, especially in April, focus on these creeks and uh, more backwaters, which just like, um, you know, Greenleaf was. It was just real obvious on the map, so there was too many boats in there. I didn't expect that many, and I didn't really have a backup plan because I couldn't find anything else in practice. So I should have just went fishing in the creeks. But I remember the last time I was here, those creeks just weren't as full of fish as what I had expected but from going in there and there wasn't many shad either last time I was in there so maybe it was just a different time of year it was the same time of year so I don't know what was going on I remember the water tip being a little warmer so maybe those fish had already spawned out and moved back out to the main river not exactly sure that was long uh, like I said it was like nine years ago so it's been a while but the biggest thing was I think the water temperature or the water was level was a little higher as well so hopefully this helps you guys. Um, if you guys do want to go catch fish, I can tell you Greenleaf Creek is full of fish, guys. Right back in there, especially this time of year, it's full of fish. There's a lot of grass in there. They'll move up into that grass to spawn. Um, if you're watching this video now, they're probably getting ready to spawn down there because they were really close to it. You can see those pictures of the fish. They were about ready to burst. I only got pictures of two of them. Like I said, I wanted the video footage, but something happened when I got transferred over to the computer. I didn't check through it all to make sure they was in there. And I deleted off my GoPro, actually, instead of uh, making sure before I deleted off my GoPro. So I don't have none of that footage, but I got the pictures anyway. So that's good. So I'm looking forward to you follow coming up. Um, hopefully I do better there. Going down here, not this, uh, this weekend, next weekend, but the weekend after. I think it's two weekends out um, from today to go down there, not the, what is it, the 18th or the 15th weekend after that. So it'll be the weekend. I think it's the first weekend of May is the tournament. I'll be there last week in April. So looking pretty forward to that or looking forward to that one. Um, we'll see how that goes. I got to really finish up there in the points to make regionals, especially after blanking at the Arkansas River. So I got a big skunk in that one. We got that out of the way this year, I guess. Maybe that's uh, – I'm in a kind of a funk right now. Got to get out of it. Got to build my way back out of it. So hopefully you follow is the answer. Last time I was there, didn't do the greatest, didn't do the worst, but I'm going to try some different things. Try to get some things to stick and see where it's at. Try to figure out these Oklahoma lakes a little more. Only been on them one year and didn't do too terrible. I think I finished 60 something in the point standings because I had a zero actually at Grand Lake, but Hopefully I can work my way back up there. I think I'm down in the 100s in the standings. Hopefully I can work my way back up into it. If I can get a couple top 10s, I can get back into the top 45. It's going to take some work, and I got my work cut out for me. Got lots of research, but can't really do anything. Um, you know, here at the house, I got to get down there. Problem is, I work five days a week. Got a lot going on the weekends to get down there. So hopefully i um, got the weekend before and the day off before the tournament to get something figured out. So um, hopefully I'll get something figured out and have something for you guys down there. That can really benefit you, which this information here can benefit you, especially if you're going out to catch fish. Greenleaf Creek, if you're not in a tournament, does not really have that much pressure in there. So you can go out and catch lots of fish in these areas, guys. And even if you're fishing a smaller tournament that's a little ways out, you could go down there and fish these as well. So 
hopefully when you guys tune back in um, next time for a tournament video, I'll have a better um, result for you guys. So hopefully this information helps you guys and looking forward to getting more videos out there to you guys. Thank you.